Well, well, well. well welcome to Mailbag Monday. What do you think the logo we have for that? A horse eating out of a mailbag. <laughs> what do you think? Is that a good or what? So uh, we want to go over the questions that we have going on here. Uh, but a couple of very important things that are going on. I was trying to go ahead and get on uh, Jared's show here today because uh, there are very interesting developments as far as the reverse repo is concerned and the draining of the liquidity that we have to work our economy off of. So the M2 money supply is coming down quite quickly. Also, the net assets of the United States are coming out, coming down, as well as the claims against uh, those assets, meaning the unfunded liabilities. So very important, folks, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. You need to be holding the money of your country, not the fiat currency issued by the government of that country. The government is the one that's issued the currency and has called this big mess. OK, so the, the dollar is going to is going away to the dustbin as the other thousands of examples of which I've shown 89 of them on the table here the other day. So um, some questions that have been coming in. What about 40 percent and 35 percent? What this refers to is that let's suppose that you have an IRA and, it, and you have your money in a vault or someplace else and not even holding it or whatever. My question to you is, is it really worth um, the, risking the 60 percent if you're in a 40 percent tax bracket in order to have somebody else hold your hold those funds to keep the 40 percent constantly tax deferred? My question would be, do you think interest rates, or excuse me, income tax rates are going to go up, go down or stay the same? Uh, well, we have a government that's spending more than what they have coming in. So I think it's logical to assume that the income tax rate might be larger or greater than what they are today. What I would suggest is you think about that. And if you could buy an asset that only costs you 35 or 40% taxes now, as opposed to 55 or 60%, or actually during Reagan years, the top marginal tax rate was 92%. Now that's what's called an incremental or marginal tax rate. But at the, at the time that you, you reach the very top level, of income during the Reagan administration, you were paying 90% on that extra income. So my question to you is, is it really worth allowing someone else to hold your money when they're never going to be as reverent about it as you will in exchange for keeping the tax deferral ad infinitum and keep it going for as long as possible? I think the way the dollar is right now, the way our economy, there are irresponsible fiscal policies of our government right now would lead me to believe that it's time to get out of the dollar casino exit the casino completely and stand on the uh, Rodeo Drive or wherever and decide where you want to go with your money after the reset occurs. So well, another question, I really like talking to Ted, where have you been hiding? Well, I retired back in 2010 for the second time. First time was when I started National Computer Ribbons Corporation and uh, wound up using uh, people or, or utilizing the services of people that were home, homebound. So we would take the uh, cartridge parts and pieces and they would assemble it. So sold that company and just when the uh, Spaceship Challenger took off. And then a friend of mine said, hey, what are you going to do now? And I took a look at the, the estate plan that the attorneys had set up for me and said, hey, well, why don't we start by doing this right? So we started the Prevenza Group and sold that in 2010. So here we are, 2024, 14 years later. And I guess I found another calling. So we're going to shine some light in some areas and, and help people take better control of their future. There's very few certified financial planners out there right now. I don't know of any really, um, but you have one here. So people have been asking about engaging me in contracts and consulting and all that stuff. We haven't really gotten it quite that far, folks. What I'm giving out is generic information that will help everybody. So um, I can make referrals to people in your area. But at this point in time, this is all being done at, uh, from the bottom of my heart to you to help you prepare for a very unsettling future if you don't do what we suggest you do. But you got to get the real money in your hand. If you're in the United States of America, you want to be holding eagles. If you're Canada, you want to be holding maple leaves. Um, in, other art, in other areas of the world, what I suggest you do is look up what your sovereign currency is and get that. But make sure it's silver money and you hold it in your hands. Don't let anybody else hold your money. So what do you think the taxes will go up? I thought taxes were supposed to go down if Trump comes back and they're and are they illegal? Well, we're not there yet, folks. Um, I believe that Trump may be coming back. I don't know. OK, uh, I certainly hope so. I don't I think we've all had enough of this Biden show, um, but we have to deal with the rules that are in front of us right now. You can't plan for a major shift 
uh, globally, or excuse me, at least in, in our government, as far as the removal of taxes from IRAs or whatever. So um, another question is, what specific year do we recommend as far as Eagles are concerned? I'm not really recommending anything. All I'm telling you is the information, the facts, okay? The facts are that David Ryder, the then director of the U.S. Mint, entered into a contract with Honeywell in order to um, design some type of tracking technology for these uh, for these eagles. And uh, there's a lot of supposition about how it works. I'd really rather not go down that rabbit hole because very soon there won't be any type ones left anyway. So then you're relegated to type twos or you're relegated to junk silver. And as far as I'm concerned right now, junk dimes at $20, $20,000 per thousand face makes each dime worth $2. So if there's 14 dimes, that's 14 dimes. Somebody wrote in here saying it's 12 dimes. There's 14 dimes to one troy ounce, okay? So that would mean that each ounce of silver would cost you $28. Well, if an equal is going to currently cost you $31, $32, I think the bargain of the century right now is this junk silver where you can find it. And there are some vendors that are out there that are selling it. But I think between 18,000 and 21,000 per thousand face, or that would be um, $1,800 per hundred face, or uh, what, $18 for $10 face, okay? Or $1.80 or $1.90 per dime. So that's the way that it works. So, um, so we are the beneficial owner, not the actual owner. This is very interesting. Yes. Your accounts that you have at uh, a number of the different uh, retirement mm -hmm. facilities that you have, I would suggest you pull that out and read very closely who the owner is of your retirement account. A lot of times what I'm finding is the brokerage firms have named themselves as the owner because they like to count that as part of their asset base that they can then borrow against. OK, and that's what's called hypothecation. And then when you borrow against something that's already been borrowed against, that's called um, rehypothecation. OK, and uh, so basically, I would suggest that you not have your money encumbered by second or third parties. You hold it yourself. And if it gets uncomfortable, go out and get a real thick mattress, lay out the, mat lay out the monster boxes in a, in a box bing fashion and uh, roll out the mattress on top and you'll sleep well, well real well. At least I know I would. Um, Ted, we were wondering about constitutional silver. Well, this is interesting because it is called constitutional silver, but for those people that, that choose to diminish us by calling us um, uh, silver stackers or uh, gold board, gold hub bugs or silver hoarders or whatever else, you know, st sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Okay. But the bottom line here is that constitutional silver is also called junk silver. And this is the silver that contained 90% purity of the dimes, quarters, half dollars, and dollars issued prior to 1965. So in 1964, 63, 62, 61, 60, and earlier, okay, our coins had real money in it as defined by the Constitution. However, in 1965, they took the money from our money. Isn't that nice? And that's our government. And they want you to hold the dollars. And I'm saying, nope, that game's over. I would suggest that you hold the money of our country, not the money of our government. Okay. So, um, how do I convince my wife that 35% of a loss is not cashing out a 401k or for or an IRA? Huh, okay. So let's see. She can either have, she can either look at a loaf of bread, okay, uh, or she can have 65% of the loaf of bread. When she gets hungry, is she going to be happy looking at it or will she be happy actually eating it? I don't know why we come up with these allegories regarding food. I feel so fat looking at you guys. This, I don't look, I'm not this heavy, guys. I'm really not. <laughs> it's horrible. I'm losing weight. I am. I am. This podcast is really doing a number on me. I, think, I don't know. They, they have a slimming camera. Can somebody find out? <laughs> this is crazy. Love your, what do we buy when we need to liquidate money and checking? Okay. What do we buy when we need to liquidate? Actually, this is what's going to happen. The Treasury is going to need the Eagles back and all the silver that you have so they can back the new currency with the with the silver. It's one thing to say that it's backed. It's another thing to have it redeemable, which means that the banks, which are going to be issuing the currency, have got to be able to redeem the currency notes you bring into the bank and receive silver for it. So where is the government going to get, where's the mint going to get all the silver when they're selling it hand over fist right out of the mint? Well, what I think they're going to do is they're going to reach out to their authorized distributors who are going to reach out to their wholesalers, who are going to reach out there to their, uh, re to the distributors and retailers. And ultimately the retailers are going to reach out to you 
and say, look, we need, we would like to, to buy your American, you would like to build, buy your silver from you. And so your coin dealer, I think, is going to be the one reaching out because he'll be making commission on getting those monster boxes back into the coin store, having the money wired to him, and then he can pay you. So that's the way that this is going to go. So we're talking about big dollars, like 20000 or 5000 or $2,000 an ounce or whatever. Don't think that that is outrageous. It's not. What's outrageous about it is the amount of dollars that have been printed and created against each one ounce of silver, not the other way around. So when you talk about QCIP and the signed birth certificates, no, I'm not going to talk about the signed birth certificates. I will talk about QCIPs, though. QCIP numbers were actually included on uh, stock certificates when you first bought them a long time ago, as well as all kinds of fancy artwork and everything. So a QCIP number stands for, um, it's a unique identification number, okay, in order to identify each share of stock who it's registered to, okay? So you'll notice that these stocks have a unique identifier on it called a QCIP number here, okay? All right. So each share of stock that you see has a unique identifier and has the name of the owner on it, okay? So you see another unique identifier here and who the owner is, all right? Paper certificate. If the system goes down, you know what's owned, all right? And again, okay, a unique identifier. Here's it was sold to, number of shares of stock. When you buy stock nowadays, you just give them your money and they send you a, a, a ledger book entry. There is no, there's no real provenance at what you own or who you bought it from uh, because the DTCC, the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation at 55 Water Street, they hold uh, all the actual stock certificates and they got them in by telling people like me to tell our clients to bring them in because it'd be a lot real easy to handle it and we can put the whole account inside of your trust for, for non-qualified assets. We don't put qualified assets inside your trust. So by putting those assets inside your trust, it makes it real easy to retitle the whole block of assets that you have. But the thing is, I should say that you had, because once those stock certificates are given up, you no longer own it anymore. So we're talking about some pretty uh, breaking news and information here. As far as I asked you to take a look at your deed to see whether or not the word land appears in it. And apparently a number of you have done that and you found out that it doesn't appear in there. No, no, as well as the fact is you don't own the stock certificates that you think you own. Entire industries are going to vanish when all this comes out. And there'll be a few platforms left over. And I believe Ted Speaks is going to be one of them that you can look to for information because we're not recommending you do anything wrong. We're recommending that you do something right. And that is to take control of your financial future. Stop trusting other people with your money. The only people you should be trusting right now is God and the periodic table. And you can trust me, okay? But these are troubling times. They're very trying times. People are doing whatever they can to make ends meet. They're working two and three jobs. Um, and keep in mind as well, it's a lot more profitable to tell a lie than to tell the truth. So, uh, and don't expect honesty from cheap people. It's, honesty is expensive. And don't expect honest, uh, uh, expensive gifts from, from, uh, from cheap people. Truth, you got to look to people that um, th that have the right agenda in mind. And I think uh, you reach in this to your heart and see whether or not what we're doing for you is we're hitting the right notes. So anyway, let's go into some of these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these comments and questions that have. I have gold and silver and an IRA stored in a vault in Delaware. Does anybody see a problem with that right now? I'm not excited about taking in and out paying tax, but getting concerned that the vault is not safe in the long run. I'm 71, any suggestions? Well, you know, here's the biggest suggestion. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. So they own your money 90% of the time. And you as an individual trying to lodge as some type of complaint against the vault, if there would be one, it could be something uh, obscure, off the wall or whatever. They wrote the contract. You didn't. It's your money. They're holding your money, and you're paying them to do so. I suggest that you're going to have to pay the tax anyway. Calculate what the tax would be. Pay the tax. Move on. Take it in your own possession. A bird in the hand is worth 10 in a bush. You ever heard that one? So um, I would suggest you eliminate unnecessary risk and eliminate counterparty risk to what it is that you think you own. So I like stacking surf a while ago. Also, husband has IRAs. What can we do? He's 79. I'm 74. Spring chickens. Yeah. The future belongs to us, doesn't it? I have nothing but silver after cashing out investments 10 years ago. Now, let me tell you. You're going to tell me that you're silver poor, right? <laughs> That's a great place to be. 
<laughs> it's better than being dollar rich, right? Or digit rich. I'd rather be silver poor because you can always sell the silver and get the dollars, but you can't always take the dollars and get the silver. And you're finding that out. Try to find type one monster boxes around anywhere and you see what we're talking about. So I would suggest that you take control of your own financial future. If you need some help along the way, send me an email, reach out. I've uh, made, I've reached out and returned about 20 some phone calls today. And it's about six o'clock so far. And in turn, on top of responding to every email that you guys have sent in. So if anyone has sent an email and haven't received the response yet, please let me know. Put it up here on the, on the, uh, on the marker board or whatever it's called. Okay. But you'll find folks that we are responding to every one of your questions, every one of your comments. That's what we're planning to do. And we're going to do that until you guys get it and you run out of questions to ask. We have a group inside that I've mentored now for about 12 years and there are 17 of them, 17. Okay. And they're all taught uh, the difference between Keynesian economics and Austrian monetary economics. In our group, we have doctors. We have one guy inside the FDIC. We have another one that's inside the treasury. There's a little remote. We have other people around the country that are feeding us information. And then as far as uh, the program I was in at MIT, I, I talk with some of my colleagues around the country, around the world, actually, and get information as far as what's going on. I'm boiling that down and give it to you. So it's very important that uh, you tune in, and I hope you're finding the content is, uh, is worthwhile. So questions and comments. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, let's see. Can they hear you? Can you hear me? Can everybody hear Margaret Ann? Put up a one if you can hear Margaret Ann. We've never done this before. We're trying something different. So we have a comment. Uh, Ted. What about 90% commemorative coins from the U.S. Mint? Well, commemorative coins, you're going to be paying more per ounce, okay? And it's not a matter how pretty it is, how gorgeous it is. It's a matter about how many tons of American silver money it is that you hold, okay? You want to be treating your own financial affairs just like the other countries around the world um, handle their financial affairs. So, for instance, if Germany wants to figure out, well, what is Germany worth? What do you count the number of, of, of euros they have or maybe German marks they used to have or number of Porsche cars or Rolls Royce or whatever it's built over there? No, uh -uh. they can't. They quantify their wealth in the number of tons of gold and tons of silver. Now, silver has been removed off the balance sheet of the United States here in 1962. Why was that? Because of the Manhattan Project. Why was that? Because they wanted to enrich uranium. Oh, what does that have to do with silver? They needed 147,000 tons of it. They took it off the balance sheet of the United States Treasury and never gave it back. Now, you think a vault is going to give your money back too? Folks, you know, <laughs> trust but verify. I, I, I'm curious to know if all of you at once decided to pull all your money out of the vault, would all of you get your money or is some of that money, or some of those bars counted twice? I don't know, Okay. It would, it would eat at me at night. I wouldn't be able to sleep very well because I know the type of bad people that are out there that are stealing from seniors. But you seniors, you do have retribution. It's financial crimes against elderly. And it's a subsection of the Department of Justice. I'd rather not get down that. But if you all have a problem and you need help, send me a text or email and I will form, send that over to a friend of mine that's looking into um, to helping you. Now, if we can get them on what's called a RICO violation, the damages then are treble damages. So whatever money it is that you lost, uh, you might be able to recoup because your damages will be multiplied by three called treble damages. This is something very important to watch because JP Morgan just broke their DPA. Oh, I don't know what a DPA is. I didn't either. A deferred prosecutorial agreement. OK, so the bottom line is you break the law, break the law, break the law for 10 years. OK, you steal from the public billions and billions of dollars. OK. Then finally, you're taking the court, you drag it all out with well, this witness, that witness. Oh, well, this one can't come, whatever. Finally, after two years of going to trial over this, J.P. Morgan's found guilty. They're fined $948 million and issued a DPA. They're found guilty, but a deferred prosecutorial agreement. You ever heard of this before? I had not. So basically, they found guilty and they said, oh, you can't do this again for three years. If you do, we're going to go back and find you guilty for what we found the guilty for. You know, we have the most expensive government on the face of the planet, folks, and this doesn't make any sense to me at all. OK, so now what's happened is J.P. Morgan was 10 days away from their DPA expiring, which means like um, like I like suppose you speed and you're given a, a break on the speeding ticket with a probation before judgment. 
I mean, you could steal billions of dollars away from our people, our citizens, the American, and we're the ones that, that are paying your salary, and you can't take care of us. We'll see you in the gallows. This is serious, folks. They're upsetting the lifestyle of us here in America. So let's go on to the next question we have. So can you talk more about the Great Reset? Wow, you guys want to go deep in this, huh? Um, I was told that I have to stay in the guardrails, okay? Uh, I will tell you this. There's going to be two resets from what I understand. Don't fall for the first one. The second one is going to be the meaningful one, okay? The reset basically is, think of it as what happened in Germany and Italy and France and Holland when the euro came through. All those countries had to give up their sovereign currency and accept the euro. What's going to happen here is the same sort of thing. All these currencies have a life cycle. I've shown you before. Do we need to show you again? I will. Okay. So let me take you over here and I'm going to show you 89 examples of where the central banks around the world have stolen the silver from depositors. Okay. This one right here, this one, that is Nathan Rothschild. What a nice guy. He put his own pic picture on that currency note. But look here. Look at this $10 million note here. Look how it was cut with a pair of uh, scissors or something. And they ran out of ink. So you'll find that there's no printing on the back. And what about the note in front of that one up there? Does that have any printing on the back? They were printing it so fast they ran out of ink. But what didn't they run out of? How about the unique identifier? The unique identifier on each and every one of these notes, you'll see. And poor Mexico, look how many times Mexico has had their currency revalued. And look what the Japanese government has done. See, each one of these notes was exchanged for silver, okay? My question now is, who has the silver now that I have the notes? Does that make sense? And look at all these examples. Some are prettier than others. But some of these notes here, look at this one, the United States. That's a that's a con that's a greenback. You can flip it over. Okay. And what does the top line on that one say there, Margaret Ann? This note is a legal tender for one dollar. 1917. So this is this game has been going on a long time. But if you count the number of examples here, folks, there are 89. How many times do you have to be jilted? in order to pick up on the fact that this is the game. The game is, they say, here, your silver's too heavy. Give it to us, okay? We'll give you paper instead. It'd be a lot easier to carry around, a lot more portable for you, okay? And trust us, we'll always give you your silver back. It doesn't happen, though, does it? So, again, what I suggest you do is trust yourself, okay? And once you get what it is, it's real money, and you don't have a vault, you don't own a bank, keep your mouth shut. OK, um, you don't want anybody to know what it is that you have or where you have it. But I can tell you another thing. You're certainly not going to be walking around with a monster box when this hits because no one's going to believe that you have one in the first place. Even a tube might be too much silver to carry around. The amount of purchasing power that is going to be shifted back into silver that's been stolen away from silver to 19, from 1871, which was in the silver from 3000 BC all the way up to 1871, over 4,000 years of history is money. Silver is, it's finally gonna return. Can you imagine the snapback? This is gonna be like finding the long lost, you know, <laughs> um, uh, what do they call it? What, we, what the word I'm thinking, long lost uh, document, okay? So at any rate, what else we got here? So uh, banks are on shaky ground. With the looming liquidity crisis, how far away are bank bail-ins? Well, let's talk about a bank bail-in versus a bail-out. Back in 2008, the banks got in trouble, and, they, and it was Paul Volcker that went to the Treasury and said, hey, look, or the government said, look, we need $2.8 trillion. Otherwise, the banks are going to shut down immediately. So what happened was the money market mutual fund, money market is supposed to be you put in a dollar, and it's always a dollar. Well, what happened was the money market broke a buck, which means that you put in a dollar, it's worth something less than a dollar, even though it's in a, in a money market. So they realized that they had to prop this up. Otherwise, the whole thing would go down in flames. And that's where we are right now. So there is no money that's been floating around. There's a small amount that's left in what's called the deposit insurance fund. 
inside the FDIC, the, Dep the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So, but that is not enough really to, to handle the onslaught of, com of what's coming. The small, the medium, and the regional banks, they were required to invest a large percentage of their deposits in the CRE, which is commercial real estate, okay? Now what's happening is the demand for, corp uh, for commercial real estate has come down and companies are realizing they can trim costs there. The problem is these buildings are not set up to be turned into condominiums. They're only set up to be office buildings. They have just the minimum amount of infrastructure in them to be able to provide for the plumbing and the electricity and that type of thing in order to function as an office, not to function as a condominium. The plumbing isn't there. The electric isn't there. The insulation isn't there. Um, they're just simply not designed for that. So this is going to be a big problem. And as the interest rates go up, the value of the bonds are going down. So uh, um, I'll be able to explain this more when I have my marker board up and show you the correlation between um, interest rates and duration of the bonds and what an inverted yield curve looks like, because we are in that situation right now. The two year bond is actually more costly than the 10 year. And it should be the other way around. The further you go out on the yield curve, the, the higher the interest rate should be. Does everybody understand that? So a 30 year interest rate should cost you more than a one year interest rate. But the system is screwed up right now. And that's because the money is messed up right now. It's the, not the money, but the currency that's being issued by the United States government, Joe Biden. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. No one knows the hour, but how much time do you think we have left? It should have already happened. It should have already happened. I mean, I remember shortly after me learning about all this, I was expecting that uh, there'd be lines around the coin stores back in uh, 2014, 2015. That didn't happen back then. All of us are, are are waiting with bated breath. There are other apps out there. There's there's lots of information that says it's going to happen today, tomorrow, or whatever. DNR Chronicles saying should have already happened. Uh, you can go to Ingersoll Lockwood, and they have an um, an idea of what might happen. Uh, you could go to qnet uh, qofficial .net, and they have another op another information sort of what they feel might be happening. The bottom line is this. Either you have it or you don't. It doesn't matter when it's going to happen, okay? Because we only have to be right one time and we win. Those friends of yours holding stocks and bonds and mutual funds and any kind of digital assets, they have to be lucky every day because one of the days that's going to end. And when it does, they'll be holding nothing and they're going to be crying in the beer. And But it's not going to be my fault and it's not going to be yours. We're telling them right now, silver is the place to be. It's been money for over 4,000 years. It's harder and harder to get. It's a finite elephant. It's always been used as money for as long as civilization's been, been having round wheels. <laughs> round wheels back 3,000 BC. I wasn't around back then. I don't even have any books around back then. Do you? No. I, no. Uh -uh. No. 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 <laughs> what else we got? Uh, can paper silver get to 500 to 1? Oh, I think it's well on its way there now. What are we talking about, though? If we were to go to, uh, can I pull up U.S. debt clock here? We can't do. Um, I can't do that. Mm -mm. Okay. Can't so share a screen. I can't share a screen. So what are they seeing right now? You. Oh, okay. All right. Well, how do we get back to me here? Okay. Anyway, on the U.S. debt clock, all right, uh, you'll see on the right-hand side, about two-thirds of the way down, you'll see paper to silver ratio, 394. It was 393. Now, what that means is that they've created 394 paper ounces of silver for every one physical ounce of silver that exists. Isn't that something? So let's suppose we're playing musical chairs and there's one ounce of silver in the, in the center of the, chair, of the ring and all of us have our hands held and it's musical chairs and we can't see the chair. So all of a sudden the music stops. 393 people are going to fall flat on the floor. That's a group. <laughs> that's bigger than an auditorium i think when i went to elementary school and so one person's going to have the seat now those 393 sitting on the floor you think they're going to be yelling and screaming where their ounce of silver is absolutely they're so quickly going to realize that one guy got it do you think the other 393 are going to bid up the ounce of silver the price of the ounce of silver could we see irrational exuberance could we see silver and gold go one to one so if you're holding gold and you get 88 ounces of silver or after the VIG, you're netting, say, 80 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold that you have. And then this goes one to one. Can you see the big boom that's going to head your way? Now, even if it reduces to five to one or four to one or 10 to one, it's still a lot better than the 88 to one right now. 
So like I told I told you on a couple of different occasions, I had cashed in my or traded my gold in for the silver at 120 to one. And what I netted after the VIG was 107 to one. So for every one ounce of gold I gave up, I got 107 ounces of silver, which is over five tubes of American silver eagles. It's pretty strong. What else we got? Uh, NASDAQ to gold, one to one. Silver to gold, 20 to one. What say you? I say that all markets are manipulated right now and you can't trust any of them. Do you really think silver should be selling for $31 or $25 an ounce? You think American silver eagles should be selling for $32? No, no, uh-uh. See, folks, there's always an asset class that's doing well. You just got to find it. So right now, all the other asset classes are doing well in the fake dollar, and they want you in those investments because it's all digital. They want to tokenize everything, digitize it for you, okay? What I'm saying is hold it physically yourself. Only one half of 1% are doing that, which means that 99.5% 99 of your fellow Americans are relying on digits. So I know people very well, they don't carry any cash at all. They rely on going to the next ATM uh, machine and getting out whatever they need in the way of a debit card. That isn't going to last, folks. Okay, things change. And I'm telling you, they're going to change. Uh, what got me involved in this uh, to this degree was when the island of Cyprus was bailed in back in March of 2013. I started studying this hog wild crazy back in November 2012, really picked it up over Christmas. And then in no January, I heard a rumor that there was a possibility of a bail in on the Ivan the Cyprus. I said, well, okay, let's just chalk that up and see if it actually happens. It did. It did. The people on the island of Cyprus were not allowed to get access to their money. The bank shut down. Now, there was an economist whose grandmother lived on the island. And he, he told his grandmother to go to the bank every Friday, get your money out, and on Monday, put it back in. She did this for years. And the teller said, Man, why are you doing this? Well, my, my son's an economist on Wall Street, and he told me to do this. Well, see, we didn't know when it's going to happen. But when it does happen, you're going to be the one with the money, and everyone else is going to be standing around. So I hope you take this. We are not receiving any advertising dollars, no support from anybody. There is no agenda here. The only agenda is truth being given out to you. And that's important right now. You got to have the truth. Do you see a day where we can trade metal for real assets without getting a mortgage? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think the 0.5% of us that have um, that are holding real money, uh, we are in the minority. And when these other assets are for sale because maybe they did bad things and they were caught up under another executive order 18535 or whatever it was, it blocks assets of people involved in human trafficking, drug trafficking and the COVID jabs and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're going to lose their assets and the government doesn't want that. They're going to want to sell it. What are they going to want to sell it for? The silver. OK, so if you're holding the real money, you're going to be able to get a heck of a deal. But if you're holding bars, that's not money, folks. OK, bars and rounds. And then to boot, not as any money, but somebody else is holding it for you. And again, at this point in time, I suggest that the only two things you can trust are God and the periodic table. God and the periodic table. Okay. What else? Can you expand on the destruction of the BIS and Trump involvement? Yeah. Why don't we talk about the BIS? Because that's been a dirty word. It's been a dirty word for a long time. BIS.org, folks. If you can pull that up on your computer, BIS.org. Okay. What you want to do across on the, on the crawl line, the gray crawl line, is go to Central Bank Hub. Okay. It's a little bit past the halfway mark on the gray crawl line at the top. When you click on Central Bank Hub, you go down to the second uh, item there to click on. It says Central Bank and Monetary Authority websites. And that is going to give you the list and name of every country on the face of the planet where they own the banks in that country, not PNC Bank or Bank of America or pardon me, JP Morgan Chase. They own the whole country's banks. So my question to you is if you could create any currency on the face of the planet in any denomination, OK, and have that honored by the people, how would you quantify your wealth? Just because you have a printing machine, you can print out the, the, the currency notes, okay? That gives you power. And any denomination gives you power, okay? But what, is the, what quantifies the power that you have? And you know what quantifies it? A long time ago, they actually held all the gold and all the silver. 
and Rothschild pulled a quick one on the floor of the London Stock Exchange, telling all the brokers at the time that uh, that uh, 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 he had broken through when Napoleon had broken through the lines at Waterloo. And so as a result, the traders on the floor decided they would sell their stock. And who was there to buy it? Rothschild. Rothschild reached out to his four other brothers around the, around the globe, said, look, I need cash. I'm, the market's crashing here and I'm here buying it. So the four brothers sent him with all the cash that they had. And in very short order, Rothschild wound up owning all the stock that was traded on the London Stock Exchange. And when he, after he had the overwhelming majority of it, he then said, oh, it looks like a mistake was made. Uh, Napoleon was actually held back at the Battle of Waterloo. He's not coming into England. So all the traders then wanted to get their stock back. Do you think Rothschild sold it back to him? No, he did not. And as a result, he became the sole lender to the crown. And because he was the lender to the crown and control the, the dollars that the crown did or didn't get, or whatever the currency was at the time, the silver and the gold that they used to make the currency, he was then able to influence the rules and regulations. So the country was ruled the way that Rothschild wanted it ruled. Okay. So uh, ye who has the gold makes the rules. Remember that one? <laughs> what else do we have? We have a comment here. Mm -hmm. uh, I traded silver to pay for a hundred gallon propane tank. The value of the new tank was a thousand dollars. The dealer wanted silver, and I wanted the tank. So he probably didn't want to trade with uh, with dollars or whatever. You're going to find more and more of that happening. Um, but um, you're going to find the silver would have gone a lot lot further along than that. I would have I would have chosen either put it on a credit card or pay cash and held on to the silver myself, but. That's me, but uh, someone said, well, geez, Ted, how much of silver is enough? Uh, just a little bit more. <laughs> no, I'm not greedy. I just want to do a number on the BIS because you guys don't know what they've been doing to you for over 100 years. You're going to find out. And when the BIS is removed, their tentacles all removed from this nasty hydra that's been directing our lives for so long, implementing taxes upon taxes and rules and regulations. I mentioned before there are 147 individual taxes on one loaf of bread. When the BIS is gone and those taxes are removed, I think our life is going to get a lot simpler and things are going to get a lot less expensive, but still the value of the silver will be skyrocketed. So when this happens, your ability to be able to afford to buy silver is going to go away. So you either take the worthless digits that you're holding on to now that only have a very limited amount of time left, all fiat currencies end and you get real money that will be around long after you're dead, your children are gone, grandchildren are gone. This will be in your family for the for the rest of your lives. Bill Holter once said that if you can come out of the other end of this uh, this financial catastrophe that we're going on going into, which I think was was orchestrated a long time ago, was orchestrated. We have brought demand in from ten years in the future into today. Now what we have to do is we got to wait for the ten years, I guess, to to percolate back up again. The only way to pull ourselves back out of this is a complete repudiation. Now. I'm talking about repudiation of the debt. I'm not talking about um, about not paying it, okay? I'm talking about repudiating it. And what repudiating it means is that it was never legal in the first place. It was never constitutional. So in instead of a debt forgiveness or whatever, no, it's not any of that. We went back and read the fine language, as you should do too in your stock certificates, and find out whether or not you actually owned it or not, and what the real letter of the law is, okay? Believe me. One letter in the wrong place can make you guilty or innocent. The same thing they're going to use to decide whether or not they're going to give you any money for the blips you have on a computer screen without the stock certificates. Again, look what they've done. Look at the beautiful artwork that used to be on these stock certificates here. Okay. You're not receiving that anymore. This is yours. It should have gone in your safe deposit box. Or if it was, you brought it back out and you gave it to a stockbroker. Okay. But look at the artwork. Look at how beautiful all this is. Okay. We don't get that anymore. So the company that owns all the stock right now is the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation at 55 Water Street. Their sole intermediary is Seed and Company, C-E-D-E and Company, at the same address, 55 Water Street. Nobody communicates with the DTCC except through Seed and Company. And if you're able to, to communicate with Seed and Company, you're pretty high up. I knew an investment relations manager with um, the big company, it was, um began with a G. Do you remember that? It was uh, um, no. a big farming company or something. Uh, it'll come back to me. 
And she was in charge of investor relations and she, somebody, one of her investors groups had a question. And so she reached out to uh, computer, uh, computer share, which is the back office for them at the time. And they didn't have the answer. They said, you got to have to get that answer for seed and company. W.R. Grace. W.R. Grace. That was the name of the company. Yep. And so she was an investment uh, relations manager with W.R. Grace. So um, what she wound up getting after a lot of back and forth was just an email from seed and company. No letterhead, no signature on it, no nothing. They want to break the relationship between you and your money. They've done it with the dollar bills and your silver. They're doing it with the uh, with the, the the dollar bills and your stock and your bonds. And as you're seeing that you don't own the real that you do not own the land that your house sits on. Check your deed and find out. So as other people have reached out to me, and uh, there are three ways that you can own your land: an loyal title, a uh, land grant, or a perfected deed. Those are the three ways. What else? How can we cash out our 401k if we are still in our early 50s? Would they allow us to cash it out? Well, that is up to the plan administrator to make those decisions according to the plan documents, okay? And typically in the plan documents, they do allow for what's called a hardship withdrawal. So you can withdraw that, pay yourself the interest back, and use those funds as you see fit. Now, it's, uh, it's, it's a big taboo to tell somebody to borrow money and go invest it somewhere else. But again, we're not investing when we put money in silver. Actually, quite the opposite. We're taking our chips off the table. We're stepping outside the casino, and we're going to wait and see which casino is still standing after all the dust settles. That's what we're going to do. And I've actually had a chance to see the new currency notes, and they're beautiful. The $20 bill is being replaced for Jackson to uh, JFK. I don't know if you all have seen this before, but I'm giving out a lot of information here. I'm trying to give you encouragement and hope for a bright future. I'm trying to encourage you to dump the dollar and get real money. It's time to return back to the Constitution, Article 1, Section 10. Yeah. What is Operation Sandman? You guys are really out on the edge here, aren't you? Operation Sandman is a group of countries that have gotten together to all dump their United States treasuries at the same time. And they're picking just the right moment to do this that will actually do an end to the dollar. So they're going to pick the right time when the dollar is already in serious trouble. And then to add pain, more misery to pain, they're going to all in concert dump the dollars. And you're going to see inflation take off like there's no tomorrow over here. You can see a hamburger at McDonald's run for 250 bucks because there are more dollars outside the United States known as euro dollars and petrodollars than there are inside the United States. And we're talking about quadrillions and they're all going to be coming back to the place that created them right back in our country. So you want to be holding the money of your country, okay? Finite money of your country, the sovereign money of your country, and ideally silver is where the power is going to go back to. If you recall, during President Trump's inaugural address, he said, we're going to return the power back to you. Well, that means the purchasing power back to you, not from the government that issues the purchasing power and pieces of paper that have no backing at all. Does that make sense? How are we doing? We're doing great. Can you recommend any books to help me understand all of this? <laughs> all of this? Wow, goodness. <laughs> I don't know where to start with that. I mean, um, no, I can't. Uh, no, besides, uh, you're looking at 27 years of experience. I mean, suppose you were going to encapsulate your career that you spent 27 years working in, where you became the absolute best that there was, which I was, in, east of the Mississippi. I was told that by ING. There wasn't another estate planning firm in Maryland or anywhere east of the Mississippi that integrated the legal aspects, the tax aspects, insurance aspects, and financial aspects, all of it put together in one nice package. So that's why we grew our practice as a Provenza group from zero up to 700 million. And then in 200, 2010, we sold it. Then I retired. And in 2012, that's when I became the, uh, uh, the trustee of a large trust. And that's when I started learning about silver. So. Anyway, we've got a couple more here, and if anyone has any questions they'd like to get on um, before we sh sign off here for this evening, what do you recommend a retirement account if you have to pay taxes on it when it's withdrawn? Should it be placed in gold back IRA? Well, why not forget about gold backing? Why not just put it into gold? But actually, the mining ratios are out of whack with gold. So gold comes out of the ground at seven to one, Okay. And of the seven units that come out of the ground, 60% of those units are gobbled up by industry. 
which leaves a residual, the reciprocal of that, which is 40% of the seven, which is 2.8 units to one. So if you're going to divide $2,100, the price of gold, by, by three units, okay, 2.8 is close to round up to three. So three goes into 2,100 seven times, right? So we'd be looking at $700 per ounce of silver. That's where it should be. Another calculation you could do is we bring it up to $116 an ounce for silver by using the same multiplier that was used to get gold from where it was back in 1980 up to 2100 and silver up to where it is at 2300 What does that multiplier have to be? So that multiplier should be the same. And if it was the same as applied to gold as it should have been applied to silver, you're going to see that silver should be $116 an ounce. I'm telling you, this is a permanent recording. You're going to be able to look back on this a month from now and say, Dad, on it, that Ted was right. So what do you recommend for a retirement account? We've talked about that. Uh, Ted, the silver chart for ounces to own. Wow, guys, you need to get this. Uh, we have tried every way we can to get it up on the website. We can't get it up on the website for you to download. It's something that we're going to have to send to you directly. Okay. So if you would email me, Ted, at tedspeaks.com, but net, net. tedspeaks.net. Let me have the paper here. Here you go. Tedspeaks.net. You know, we did all this, folks, since March 1st. In, since March 1st, we have 150,000 people following our channel, over 2,000 comments, a couple of hundred emails, and everyone's been replied back to. Haven't you? If you're replying here now, haven't we gotten back in touch with you? Haven't we said, yes, thanks. Welcome to the team. Um, welcome to the journey. We got back in touch with everybody, didn't we? So if um, if you could help us out, there's a, there's a like button, I think, down at the bottom. I don't see it on my screen here. But if you would hit the like, what that does, the percentage of the people that are watching is compared to the percentage of the people that hit the like button, okay? The higher the percentage, the more people see the message, okay? What I would prefer that you do is you all hit the like button if you like what it is that we've told you. If you don't, then uh, I guess you don't have to. But at any rate, it would be nice if you did. That's my little, your, you know, do me a favor and do that. So um, I think you got to like and subscribe. And again, I'm still getting used to all this. This is only like the, I think this is the ninth program we've done. Yeah, maybe. Ninth, ninth <laughs> podcast. I, I'm going to call them broadcast. It's easier for me. And uh, that we've done. But over 150,000 people are just like you. They're concerned. They want to know the truth. And you're getting the truth here and it's free for the time being. Now, truth isn't really actually free. Somebody's paying for it. But in this case, it's not you. So Merry Christmas. <laughs> All righty. Anything else? Uh, what market be available to silver rounds and bars? Uh, you probably have to go back to the coin store or find someone that will buy them from you. But then your your fungibility is lost, isn't it? And then you're up to whoever will buy that from you. If you have the coin of the realm, okay, the coin that is the money of your country, and you go to buy something that you want, and you have the right money and people recognize it and they believe in it, guess what? You'll get what it is that uh, you want to go buy. Now, if I'm standing in line to buy a unit and they only have one and you're standing, I'm standing in line with eagles and you're standing in line with bars, who's going to get it? I am. You know that. But but listen, I guess it was real easy to and so, oh my, you can get it real close to spot. You can get the price down. It's not a matter of how much you pay for the silver. It's what the silver is worth when it's time to use it. Does that make sense? Let's look at the big picture. A friend of mine once told me, Ted, it only costs 10% more to go first class. And I can tell you, there's a lot you learn hanging out with those types of people. You're hanging out with one of them now. So, anything else? Uh, what price do you see silver topping out at per ounce? I've heard so many figures, $100, $1,000, $4,000 or more. Let's suppose that ultimately the price of gold, uh, silver and gold are not measured in terms of dollars as we currently know them. How many shovelfuls of salt or how many shovelfuls of dirt will you take for one ounce of gold? How many? Well, you say, I'm not going to sell it for ounce for shovelfuls of dirt. Well, because why? Because the dirt has no value, right? Okay. So what we're realizing is that the intrinsic value of our currency is three cents. Costs three cents to print a one, five, ten, fifty, hundred dollar bill. Okay. So why is a hundred dollar bill a hundred times more valuable than a one dollar bill when it only cost the people that issued it three cents? But you know what? It only costs them one out of a hundred or one out of ten.
to print the currency because 90% of the currency that you're using that's in the banks has not even been created yet. They can't afford to create it. You're talking $12 trillion of deposits in the bank. There's no, the, the currency hasn't even been created for that. Now, what has been created is $1.2 trillion. So that's why you can't go in the bank and get out $10,000 because it hasn't been printed yet. Does that make sense? So. Do you recommend any crypto coins? I'll tell you what. I'll recommend the crypto coin if you can find me a crypto that will actually tell me which crypto coin I actually own. Tell me what's a unique identifier. For instance, if Bitcoin has a million coins that they say they why are they even calling them coins? They're not coins in the first place. That's the first, that's the first uh marker right there. That's the first firecracker to go up in the air. Why are they trying to attach something that isn't real to something that's real? Why don't they just explain what it is? A coin is a coin is a coin. It's been that way for 3,000 years. So if you're gonna call Bitcoin Bitcoin, right off the bat, my antenna goes up and says, something ain't quite right here. So then it, they're gonna say, well. We're only making a hundred a million of these Bitcoin. All right. So if I buy a Bitcoin, which Bitcoin number am I bought? Did I buy? Or let's suppose I didn't buy an entire Bitcoin. I bought a percentage of one. What percentage of what Bitcoin did I buy? Show me the paperwork. Show me the old fashioned stock certificates that used to be given away. Something that's real. Something I can hang my hat on is to what you're accepting $67,000 for. And where's the intrinsic value in that? Who got the money up front and why? What did they get paid for? The idea? I mean, it's an idea to start a, a, a silver mine. There's a lot more work after, involved in that after just having the idea. You got to find out where the mine is located, where the load is located. L-O-D-E is called a mother load, okay? Where the concentration of silver is. Then you got to get permission from the government. Then you got to bring in your equipment, stake it all out, bring in the blasting caps, the bulldozers. Then you got to bring in a big grinder to grind up all the rock. You got to add the slurry stuff to it to separate for the aluminum, the copper and the zinc and the silver and the gold. It's quite a process. So when you buy silver and gold, you're paying for somebody's effort that went into making that silver and that gold. But when you're buying a Bitcoin, whose effort are you paying for? Where is that value? It's a Ponzi scheme as far as I'm concerned. If everyone wanted to sell their Bitcoin at the same time, is there any intrinsic value there at all? However, on the other side, if everybody wanted to sell their silver at the time, same time, do you think there would be a market for that? And would there actually be money exchanged for that? You're absolutely right. Because silver is used in a number of different uh, uses. Actually, it's a strategic metal. We use it in our armaments. We use it to protect ourselves. We use it in, in electronics. We use it in medicine. Silver nitrate. It's an antimicrobial. Okay. So... Last one I have. Okay. Uh, but I but I feel I'm not ready if the dollar collapses. Should I keep getting silver eagles? Why not? What are your options? I mean, just continue to hoard it in the bank? Uh, put it underneath the mattress? These are trying times, folks, but you're only going to be given this one. This is the only time you're going to be able to do it. How many times does a dollar go away and a new currency comes out and it's going to be backed by silver and gold? How many times has a new currency gone uh, come into being around the globe? Ask the people in Europe what happened with the euro. Ask the people in China. Every country on the face of the planet has seen a currency reset, with the exception of, of us here in America. We have not. The last uh, currency note we had was the greenback that I just showed you there on the table. But for gosh sakes, folks, there's 89 examples of the banks taking your silver and leaving you high and dry with worthless pieces of paper. Are you going to let it happen again? That decision is yours. Anyway, it's been fun. We'll be back at you. Uh, we have um, uh, another plan uh, get together with Ron. I think we might do Ron at Ron's basement on Friday. And then Sunday, I believe, we'll be on with uh, Stacking Silver, uh, Surfer, Stacking Surfer, Jared. And uh, again, Mailbag Monday. Did you like the horse? I was try trying to do something funny. Uh when, when uh, Nick told me we were going to do Mailbag Monday, I'm thinking a feed bag for a horse. <laughs> Let me know whether or not you like it, okay? Folks, thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Please hit the like button down below, okay? I've given you a lot. All I'm asking you to do is give me the like button, okay? And if you didn't like it, then go ahead and hit the negative button. You'll be one out of a million to do that. But hit the like button for me, please. And hit the subscribe button. It does a lot to help the algorithms here. It helps us get our message out to more people with less marketing expense on our side. Thank you very much.